Cool. Well, welcome to Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die, a podcast telling stories of founders, investors, and operators working to turn the world we live in into a better place. So, um, Chris and uh, and Cam Grant, we have here from from Anyag. So, welcome, gents. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yes. Pumped to yeah, be here. Yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. Um, so, before we dive into anything, um, we have. As per usual, with uh, with two rare today, we like to welcome our guests in. And Walo, I'll throw it over to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Matthias, please hit it for us. Let's begin. <laughs> 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 nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that one was actually heartfelt. I think, um, yeah, most of the the songs well I've done have had a bit of a comedic flair, but that one really came from from deep in the soul. I feel like. Mm. Yes. Yes. I, <laughs> I have to agree. I'd have to agree. Yeah. I saw their stuff and it really struck me. So I was like, yeah, let's go. Very soulful for this. Very. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Love it, man. Yeah, not nice and deep to to start the morning off, and uh, yeah, very <laughs> very apt message for, for this time, really. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome, gentlemen. Um, would love to yeah dive into obviously the story of Anyot and and where you guys uh, are at and where, where it's all going and so forth. But why don't you um yeah start by telling us a little bit about yourselves? You know, a bit of background. Who are you? Where are you from? So on and so forth. Um, yeah, welcome and, and tell us about yourself. Sweet. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. So maybe I'll start off and then I can throw to Cam. So um, if, if you haven't heard, Cam and I are twin bros. Um, we we grew up together, obviously, uh, up in uh, NT, up, up in the north of Australia. Um, we, we sort of gained our affliction for travel and the outdoors early because we moved state every two or three years bouncing around with our family um you know during our youth and then fast forward a number of years we we rounded out the end of high school in sydney and um then look looking at myself more closely i i I took a bit of time off after after school um traveled went to europe backpacked around there for a year and a bit um, then came back to Sydney um, to to hit the books, study marketing finance. Um, then I moved into marketing role in the wine industry uh, in a company that was then bought out by by one of Australia's largest companies, Woolworths. Um, and then uh, worked as a marketing manager in in that sort of machine for for a little bit too long, to be honest. Um, and then mm-hmm. jump jump ship when I found a way to do it to to a fast growth ed tech startup um, general assembly um, mm-hmm. joined them and they were pretty fresh um, in Australia and then uh, traveled with them to Singapore to help start the business uh, over there yeah awesome love general assembly and what yeah. about you cam what's what's uh, what's your what's your story I guess <laughs> uh, <laughs> like little little different to Chris same sort of thing like um traveled like I, 
a shitload throughout uni like you know every every sort of few months would be overseas mm -hmm. like in sort of pretty off the grid locations like mountains nice. and, jung and jungles and um in terms of study i actually studied international relations um for my bachelor and then kind of knew that i wanted to go traveling for a whole bunch but also pro like do something um productive at the same time so mm -hmm. i um i hit up all the australian embassies <laughs> almost in europe and um just sent them cold emails asking about internship programs and mm -hmm. the spanish one got back to me and um and said you know hey yep we can do it but you need to pass a language exam so I went and studied Spanish for a couple of months and then and then passed it and basically went and lived in Madrid for a year and traveled around Europe. Um, and while I was there, I I did um, some work with DFAT, um, but also with the Australian Trade Commission. So you learned a bit of business strategy, like market entry mm -hmm. strategies and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. That got me interested in that line of um, sort of thinking, like applying those same kind of systems and model thinking, but to business. and. Um, I then came back home and did a master's of strategy um, here in Sydney and somehow ended up at Commonwealth Bank, which uh, <laughs> you know, anyone knows me is, uh, is not the place that I... You don't look like a banker. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> a, bit, a, bit less, a bit less hair back in the day. Wild but, uh, banker, wild yeah, banker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the suit would, was definitely not a good fit. And, um, yeah, yeah. But, but learned <laughs> lot, you know, I was lucky to be in a pretty high paced, um, like interesting team, quite diverse. And we mm -hmm. had quite a lot of autonomy and stuff. So that sort of really helped getting unyoked off the ground because I would I'd work on unyoked for most of the day there and then do my bank work at night. <laughs> yeah, I remember right. our, um, our mum had to stop him from burning his his suits and ties when when he left combat, and she's like, you know, you, you don't have many of these. You, you might need them at some point. <laughs> oh, yeah. A bit of a ritualistic uh, burning of the burning of the corporate yeah. um, the corporate camp. Yeah, that's yeah. classic. So, what about you guys? Um, did you have a good relationship growing up, the two of you? Like, uh, obviously, you're you're in business together now, but was it? Did you have a close brotherly? Uh, relationship were you like bickering you know was it uh were your best buds all the way through how, how was it for you two growing up we um we've we've always been good mates you know we've we've always worked together as well i think from our first paper gotcha. run at 12 years old or something then we you know we worked at the cinemas together we worked in call centers gotcha. together so um mm -hmm. working together has always felt natural for us Obviously, there's been some um, some you know brotherly conflicts along the way, but Cam and I are both um, you know fairly uh, pacifists, I guess. So you know, prefer yeah. to, to to sort things out through a conversation than than through any other means. Yeah. So you know, we mm -hmm. we never got too too competitive. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think um, whether through nature or nurture, because our our mom actually um like she never wanted us to be the twins, so we were always in mm -hmm. different classes at school and stuff yeah. like that, mm -hmm. but we've sort mm. of we're always we always have the same kind of end view but we come about it through very different ways and you know like it, we're sure. always in, the, in the same sport teams but we play like opposing sides of the of the field or the pool or we yeah, do, yeah, yeah. you know in we were swimmers and chris did freestyle i did backstroke like chris did short distance <laughs> and did long distance so it's kind of um complementary but yeah working together sort of which um yeah, yeah pretty pretty cool. lucky position to be good in. way to, good way to go about yep. it um yep. So, so unyoked, yeah, cool. So coming from really um, quite different backgrounds. So tell us about where the idea for, um, for unyoked, because it's quite, it's quite unique, you know, like I, I got, um, I only really saw you guys through a partnership you had with Koala a couple of years ago. And it was right around the time um, I just noticed Tiny House Nation on Netflix and the whole Tiny House movement, um, I don't know if you if you really align heavily with that and, and with what you do, but it was kind of all this whole thing was new to me. So tell me uh, and tell us, yeah, I guess the idea. And I'm also interested about where the name came from. Um, I kind of get it, but I want to know the process of like coming to to the name Unyoked. Yeah, where did it all come from? Yeah, um, well, it it basically came from like you know gr growing up, I guess, and then also all throughout uni, like we we got away and we were sort of like you know lived lived in the city but for the outdoors and um those trips that we did all throughout uni we had that freedom and that time to just really disappear um but then when we entered sort of corporate life that kind of disappeared and you know you get caught up in that whole the busy currency that everyone has like you know when you rock mm. up to your mates and everyone asks how are you and people just answer busy and it's mm. just that kind of bullshit. so we we were looking for a way to replicate those big trips we did overseas where you just yeah leave your phone your wallet at home and just feel relaxed and recharged when you when you came back 
Uh, mm -hmm. But being able to do it on a Tuesday or Wednesday. So, you know, I was getting spreadsheeted to death at the bank. I'd have like spreadsheets on one screen, Instagram on the other with cabin porn. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, which like, yeah, talk, <laughs> talking to shareholders, there's some different interpretations of what that means. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but we'd, yeah, we'd be you know, sort of yearning for this little cabin in the middle of nowhere that we could get to, but we were stuck at our desk and wearing our suit. So we'd um, basically be on like page 10 of Airbnb and nothing hit that box. Like it's always mm. apartments mm. or in the town or it's mm -hmm. something that's you know yes might be in nature but it's like really you know tacky or crappy sort of place um so we sort of put two and two together and we're like why don't we why don't we try and build this and um we had a good mate two mates of ours an architect and a builder started chatting with them um we sort of hit go without even really thinking too much about it like we sort of blinked and we were building a cabin and then um <laughs> throughout that time we talked with all of our friends and friends of friends and everyone's eyes lit up and they wanted that as well so we realized mm -hmm. it was quite a common feeling and yearning and uh and that's where kind of we decided like you know it, it's um good there's a business here as well so we kind yeah. of um yeah put the hand down and and one thing led to another and now we're uh now we're here um yeah Chris, Chris, yeah, that's awesome. Chris that's awesome. Um, was the first instigator of the name, so maybe he can um he can give a bit of insight onto that. Yeah, and just on the on, on the sort of tiny house connotation, de definitely at first we um you know we we explored all all modes of cabins and mm -hmm. and back then this this was well before Tiny Nation all those the, the, those sort of um you know popular mm -hmm. TV shows. So. We we found someone in Bulgaria who 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 made one and and had a number of um discussions with her on on the plans and and that was sort of the, the first spark because no one in Australia had heard of one and but um yeah. these days it's it, it's something that that we've moved away from definitely you know we we see ourselves as a as a nature company not a tiny house company um and, gotcha. and our category is is nature and our our purpose is you know, explaining to people the benefits of nature and then helping people mm -hmm. access those regularly. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we we tend to not not um, participate as much in the in the tiny house stuff these days. But yeah. that's just because we're trying to trying to accomplish a lot more. We think. Um, yeah, I kind of thought as much. That's why I said I'm not sure whether you guys really align so much. It's not really plastered across your your, your values and your websites and so forth. But 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 it is. It def definitely came. Um, to me at the same time that I, that I started to get interested in, in that kind of stuff as well. But it's, um, <clears throat> it's interesting what you say, uh, particularly Cam, about um, the yearning for travel and switching off and so on and so forth. So um, my personal experience with, um, with travel, I traveled when I was 24 for about seven months through Latin America. Um, started, in, started in Mexico, ended in Buenos Aires, um, so on and so forth. And I lost my, I took a phone with me. I lost my phone within about a week and a half. And all I traveled with most of the, like uh, most of the day I'd be wearing a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, a pair of like Havianas and I'd have a few dollars in my pocket and that was it. Yeah. And it was incredible because you were fully in the moment, you know, really experiencing yeah. things. I actually in six or seven months read 20 plus books, 20, uh, um, 20, 24 books. The next year I went back to uh, Central America again for three or four months and then I also did a bit of a stopover in uh, a couple of other parts of the world. And I took a laptop because I had a nice new laptop and I had my phone also. Mm -hmm. And I, in four months, I read two books <laughs> and I sat on my phone and I, I noticed it. I noticed at the end of the, the trip, I was like, wow, that was such a different experience because mm -hmm. I didn't make as many like buddies along the way. Yeah. I didn't read as much and I didn't have as, I, I don't know, I didn't have as, as free of an experience. And travel for me right now, when I go and do small trips, it isn't the same as that first trip that I did because, you know, I'm 35 now. So like my days of partying in hostels are, you know, getting a little bit more limited <laughs> and so forth. But, the, the, but in the last couple of years, you go into a hostel and people, it's like you're on public transport. People are staring at their phones. It's really quite, I feel like the old guy, you know, I feel like the old guy that's like, oh, back in my day, it was different. But it's kind of sad, you know, it travels so incredible. But social media has kind of ruined it a little bit. Mm -hmm. We could talk for days on, on on this stuff. You know, we uh we agree with you. You know, a, a thousand percent there. The world is going in the wrong direction in, in a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. so you, you, you look at the 
the um, adoption of technology next to the increase in, in, in mental health issues. And, you know, they're, they're both exponentially increasing and there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of uh, correlation and causation there. So, yeah, we, yeah. Um, we sort of see Unyoked as a, as a champion of a movement away from that and to, mm -hmm. and to try, and, try and get people back to it. Now, I, I had to eat my own medicine the, the other day. I, um, I, I went out to test a, a new cabin and I, I brought my laptop with me. I had a thousand to, to do um, to, to do while I was there staying in it. And, and um, my team hadn't listed that it was one of the cabins with no reception at it. So I yeah. got there and I, I was down in this beautiful valley with these pine trees and it, th th there's a creek running past it. And I thought, oh shit, you know, I can't, I can't do anything that I'd planned to do. And so mm -hmm. I just chilled. I went for a walk. I meditated. I, I read one of the mm -hmm. books that were there, and I, mm -hmm. I came back only 24 hours later, and and I felt so much better. So you know, and there was a, a little surprise, um, forced, uh, yeah, forced dose of of the you know our own product, and uh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. So. I remember um, before the show, before we actually started recording, we talked um, via email, I think, a, a little bit about kind of the data around this stuff and like some of the things that you guys are trying to trying to show with like um, what unyoked and the, and the feeling it gives people. Can you talk to that at all? Like what 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 results do people, you know, see after going and spending a day, two days, three days in the wilderness, switched off, so on and so forth? Yeah, what 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 do you have around that? Yeah, I mean, it's one of um, like that's kind of the key thing we're trying to do. Like Chris mentioned earlier, is really raise awareness of the benefits of nature, which are scientifically proven, and then help people access them more frequently and and when they need them most. There's kind of three main ones that it's sort of de-stress. So like it's um, scientifically proven to reduce cortisol levels, I think, by about twenty percent after you've been outside for two days. It wow. even just even just looking at um, fractal patterns, so like a, a leaf essentially has that same mm -hmm. effect. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, the second one is um, getting a sense of perspective. So we call it wilderness vibes. It's our sort of word, but that that um, it's the feeling of awe, um, like that feeling of looking up at a mountain or a massive pine forest and time slowing down and that little tingle in the back of your neck, that's actually scientifically proven to get rid of your stress and worries and make you feel closer to, to other people um, because mm -hmm. it sort of makes you feel part of something, mm -hmm. makes you feel you know smaller and gets rid of the ego. Um, mm -hmm. And then also um, creativity actually is a massive one. Like, you know, all writers and artists can sort of attest like for, you know, hundreds of years, there's all famous people that have gone out to the woods and got inspired. And that's mm -hmm. because um, I think there's a famous study that they did in the States where it's uh, increased um, creative problem solving skills by 50% after spending mm -hmm. a couple of days out in, in the wilderness. Um, wow, that's but, so interesting. Yeah. And it, it, it's kind of the stuff that, you know, everyone knows, like you go even to the park or outdoors, you feel it, but people yeah. don't quite understand why. And, that, and that's what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, I think our own studies, we're actually like trying to, well, we, we want to launch essentially our own science arm that we've got running um, with some PhD students and things to basically prove this in our own context. Um, mm -hmm. And we've, uh, our current studies say it's 96% of people that come down midweek um report a, a tangible increase in their uh, mental well-being um which is that's pretty good result mm. so that's super interesting um my first startup was an adventure travel company um uh and the whole the, the tagline was um, improving the world through travel exercise mindfulness and conversation and it was mm. awesome we take people all around the world on fitness adventure holidays um and we train and, and meditate and so on and so forth um the thing that I found really difficult was we were selling, um, and so are you guys, we were selling something that's a nice to have that is intangible. And we didn't get to the stage of, of creating um, like data sets around it. But I think mm. for you, I think it's super, super powerful because then you're not selling a warm and fuzzy feeling of a nice getaway for two days. You're selling, this is the results that we see over hundreds and thousands and whatever people that have, stayed in our cabins over the last five years you can you can really yeah you can make the intangible quite tangible um and that's why i was interested before the before we jumped on the call I, I i asked you guys like hey do you have data around this stuff because it's fascinating um so yeah that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah it, it's all about um like you said it's, it's just once they get out there you know like we um i think it's um you know our cabins 
they, they look cool. They're, I mean, they're like people just want to be in a cabin sometimes, but um, we've actually done some surveys and uh, I think it's probably about 60% of people say that they're like, they came their first time because it looked cool and they wanted to be in a cabin. Yep. Then the second and third times they stay, that drops down by 90%. And they say they came mm -hmm. to recharge, they came to de-stress, they came to boost their creativity. So they just mm -hmm. instantly when they're there, they, they get that feeling because of... Um, like, you know, we, we specifically choose our sites so they're super immersive. So you get that maximum mm -hmm. effective dose in a, in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I have a question for you guys, like a bunch. I've stacked them up because of <laughs> Doc. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of, he kind of, yeah. So, you know, uh, basically, I, I really like what's, what Unyoked is doing. You know, there was this phrase that caught my attention, you know, more like Patagonia, less like Airbnb. So it's not like, I don't know who came up with that, but that was pretty cool. I, yeah, <laughs> like I really like, cause it's, it kind of completes what you stand for. It's not, I'm not trying to sell vibes here. Like we're trying to sell like an actual, something you need, like this is important for you. This is important for the world, you know, human beings. So like I have this, I really like psychology, you know, and mental health kind of overlaps at some point. So there's this thing about boredom in general, the thing that makes all of us get addicted to our phones, like humans are naturally bored. So like, do you, like, are, we, are you trying to prove that, um, like, even though we all need boredom, we'll get to the point where we realize that, like, our phones are too fast and we need to replace those quick acting those quick shots of dopamine with like awe and you know silence you know because it's pretty hard to like when you're used to your fast moving phone it's pretty hard to like sit down and just like shut up and pay attention to the world <laughs> around you you know because it's like yeah because we have quick alternatives it's, you know so it's like how how do you think the the world is going to take this like how do you think the world will learn from this you know what is our best shot at getting this to them? You know? It's a yeah. good question, definitely. Um, yeah. I, I might jump in there first, Cam, and then throw to you. But um, on the on the quote you found, um, and that's, I think, your, your, your copywriter brain picking that out, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. That, uh, it's, it, it really, for us, signifies that we want to, to build a company that, that stands for something and that, that, that's mm. built, on, built on values um, and, and that's not transactional. Um, you know, we we want something that that lasts, and that's that's you know solving a problem. Um, and yeah. uh, for us, that that problem's largely to do with the with the one you, you just laid out there. You know, the the a lot of the problems in in the world today, a lot of um, you know modern issues are caused by people not having enough time to be able to let the dots connect and make up their own mind and you know they're, they're in these echo chambers on social media um and mm. it's just it's just feeding those those, those short hits you know that they, they need to take a dopamine detox they need to um tap out and and yeah think and be silent and um you know talk to your partner instead of watching tv and you know these are things that our um you know our, our bodies evolved to do and and now you know over hundreds of thousands of years and then over the last 80 years we've introduced technology which is blocking those core functions of, of our bodies and our mind and uh yeah we we really see being able to to let people get bored again and and, and let people just look at mm. some trees and and guide them and teach them that this is important and and you can do that yeah. through unyoked um because mm. You're right. If if you just let people to their own um, devices, that they, they won't find that. You know, a lot of people are, are pretty deep in the cycle, um, and so you know that's yeah. that's what we're trying to do. Like you know, be the Patagonia of this problem and 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 solve yeah. these issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's that. Yeah. It's kind of a result also of like the just the conventional, you know, nine to five sort of norms that that have been um, persistent in culture up till now. Like it's one of the only beneficial things that's come from coronavirus is that it's forced people, more people mm. than to challenge mm. that. Like why yeah. are we like why do we care about this? But um that whole work life balance concept, like that that it's meant you know balance is meant to be this straight line in the middle that that's not true you know balance actually comes from flicking between the two extremes mm -hmm. and, and that's how yeah. life should be lived in fluid motion yeah. that you know sometimes oh. you're head down doing work or you're busy or you're on your phone other times mm -hmm. just totally go off the grid and disappear and and that's that's kind of how life should be and 
where um, you know the, we kind of created Unyoke to sort of help people mm. realize that and then help them live that that more flexible way as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I I thank you both for your wonderful replies. These are like like bullets to my brain, man. I'm just like, wow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. yeah. Because what what they're basically saying, Doc, is that Unyoke is technology, but like not technology that makes things faster, easier, smoother, but like technology that makes things slower, calmer, because yeah. technology makes life better, makes things move faster, easier. Let me not use the same faster, easier, mm -hmm. you know? So that means on you is technology that will help human beings, you know, adapt to the complexity of our world. You know, mm -hmm. our world is getting so stressful, you know, and it's like mm -hmm. on you is what we will all begin to need. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. I think it's definitely what what we need, and I like the fact that it's forced, for the most part. You know, like it's forced yeah. downtime. It's no forced to switch on because because for me, you talk about that work life balance, and I think, all right, cool. Every day, I try and at the moment over the last few months, I ride my bike around Albert Park, my my fixie, and I ride on the gravel with um, going super slow with a with an earphone in just to be by the lake and to move my legs and just to get out of the house for a little bit, get out away from the screens. But at the same time, without a doubt, I've got a headphone in 95% of the time I'm doing that. I do it every day. And I'm listening to uh, an audio book. I'm listening to a business podcast, so on and so forth. Yeah. And that's awesome because I love that stuff. But even my downtime isn't downtime away from mm -hmm. things. I've still got an, I've got Apple, you know, sending me sponsored adverts <laughs> in my ear for like every, yeah. every 40 minutes, you know? So, yeah. so it's, it's not really, it is downtime. It's getting away from things, but we're so connected that I really think as soon as I saw it on Yoked, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. The world needs this. I hope whoever is behind yeah. this is wildly successful, you know? Yeah. And it's good to see that, that, that you guys are getting some success, the, the success that you deserve and the success that the world needs. So mm. um, tell us a little bit about the, the, the growth side of things, guys. So like, what does the business model look like? You know, how has it been um, through the pandemic? What are the what are the cabins that you have at the moment? Um, what does that look like? Yeah, no worries. So we, um, I guess you know we uh, have been going for a little while. Like I think technically this is our our fourth or fifth year, um, mm -hmm. but we went slow on purpose to start with. Like we, um, you know, like like Wallo, um, that quote that he picked up on the Patagonia versus Airbnb, um, and like Chris said, we we wanted to create something meaningful. Um, like, you know, the brand is something that represents uh, a lifestyle and that people can identify with and, and be part of this community. And then the experience is what allows them to physically live that out. Um, and so we went pretty slow on purpose to really go deep on that and build something that, that we want was authentic and us. Um, and then so we went from sort of two cabins to seven cabins over a couple of years and then to 15 in um, 2019. And then we sort of were ready to kind of, you know, put the foot down a little bit. Um, so we're now at uh, 43 cabins. Um, wow. And that's across um, oh, oh, oh. the seaboard, more or less. Um, so Queensland, um, New South Wales, Victoria. And then um, where, yeah, this fundraise that we're doing now is sort of to bring us to that next level and go sort of 100 plus cabins. And we'll be going um, to some key international markets as well, um, which is super exciting. So um, sick. Yeah. So, so how does it work with um, how does it work with securing the land? So, do you rent small parcels of land off farmers and and big uh, people that own big properties in regional areas? Like, how does how does that all work? I've never understood that side of it. Yeah. So, I'll jump in there. Um, it's we, we, we tested a number of processes. Uh, in in mm -hmm. short, um, mm -hmm. we we predominantly partner with private landowners, um, at, at least in the early stages. So. Uh, people who uh, are either generational farmers or own, own an investment property, uh, and we will we'll rent a small patch of their of their land. Uh, we we own the asset. We we bring in the cabin, um, set it up, um, uh, fit it out, train to train the 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 cleaning staff, um, and then you know fill it and op operate it and manage it. Um, mm -hmm. That's the uh, the general business model. Today we also partner with uh, 
non-for-profits and and uh, land trusts and government organizations and uh you know larger entities that have access to to uh, you know large parcels of land around australia and, and, and other countries around the world so anyone who's got a, a wilderness asset that you know is perhaps underutilized or or that you know we can we can help them monetize to earn some extra revenue on and um, definitely our preference is to work with partners who are putting some of that revenue back into uh, the property mm -hmm. as well and to to rehabilitating um, the, the the flora and fauna on, on that property at the same time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do you have many competitors in the space there, there are, yeah. We, we were first to market, um, but like any any decent idea, um, other people can give it a go. And you know, Cam and I are, uh, are all for that. Um, so yeah, there, there are some others in the market, but they're um, we think a more transactional um, accommodation option, mm -hmm. and that you, you'll find them on Airbnb and on stays. And you know, we mm -hmm. we don't use any third party platforms, and we we put a lot of time and effort into making sure um, our experience is uh, it, it, it lives up to the hype. Um, and so mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, a, it's an immersive experience designed specifically to get you those benefits of nature, whereas the, the other options we, we think are just a, a nice day in a paddock. Mm. Yeah. Nice one. Um, so how do you see, as you scale, as you grow, so as you said, um, this next funding round, will take you over 100 cabins, I'm sure in a couple of years, time you'll have you know hundreds more how do you see the equilibrium between okay cool we're building a business taking people into these remote beautiful uh, areas parcels of land um, sanctuaries so on and so forth how do you make sure that you're maintaining a good equilibrium between the beauty of the nature that's out there and then popping up i love the model right i love the model but just playing devil's advocate popping up small um commercially driven you know getaways on all these beautiful areas of land where's the equilibrium how how fast can you scale it how hard do you want to scale it within keeping everything in that nice place if you if you get what i mean yeah i mean it's a core uh, philosophy of ours like one of the core reasons of why we're doing this is to um increase people's appreciation for nature and understanding mm -hmm. of it so that then they become more environmentally conscious and sustainable for the mm -hmm. future so we mm -hmm. we only open sites that we basically can leave and and leave no trace like where you know we mm -hmm. specifically design our cabins so that they're minimal footprint and so on some sites the only thing that's required is a small gray water trench of a couple of meters mm -hmm. other than that mm -hmm. you wouldn't even know we're there once we leave um oh, and, sure. And yeah, it's all about raising the awareness of that. So we wouldn't, yeah, want to go and yeah, you know, have any negative impact to these environments. Hopefully, mm -hmm. by having people out there on total solar power, rainwater, composting toilet, where our hope is that they sort of um, actually start living like that. You know, when they go back to the city, yeah. start mm. caring more and you know, eating less meat, donating to reforestation efforts and things like that. And um, mm -hmm. you know, long term, that's kind of one of our visions is that we can maybe use some of our success to sort of buy up like farming land and, and reforest it essentially and sort of drive that push to to not even only saving the existing nature but creating more. Um, I don't, I don't know if that answered your question, but... Yeah, no, for sure. I'm just, you know, like, I wouldn't assume unyoked would ever be, you know, the size of Amazon. And if, you know, it's not it's not what you're... It's not, I, I know without asking the question, it's not what you guys are aiming for. Um, but obviously, um, yeah, just wanted to hear your thoughts around, like, how you, yeah, preserve the land that you're on and, and, and be respectful to it, I guess, is, is the thing. Um, yeah. And I, I totally I totally appreciate that. Hey, tell me about um tell me about Wall. Wall, the uh the cabin cuz I'm heading out there in about 10 <laughs> to 12 days. What's give us the give us the pitch on Wall, the, the brief. Yeah, that's that, that's super cool that, that you managed to to nab a booking and um fingers <laughs> crossed are the are the third time uh, lucky third time lucky thanks to covid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are, are, are the lockdown laws uh, looking like they'll they'll be all right for you today. Well, I'm still underneath the table. Got my fingers crossed here, Chris. So let's just um, so, let's assume that every. I'm gonna um, prepare. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. Yeah, but yeah, we're, right. let's say we're going. Fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> no, I like the attitude. So no, Walt Wall's awesome. Um, it's it. It was one of our our first cabins, probably our 
fourth cabin off the bat, uh, you know, and, and as Ken mentioned, we're, we're nearing 50 at the moment. Um, that said, we, we, um, we put a new cabin in uh, ooh, about six or eight months ago. So you, you, you're going to have a brand new cabin. Um, the, the location's great. It's, it's in the, uh, in the West near the Pyrenees mountains. Um, you've, you've got a view of, of a vineyard on one side and then the mountains and, and state forest on the other side. Um, you can take your hiking boots and do some of the trails into the state forest. Uh, um, you know, get, get lost in there or, or just hang around the cabin. Uh, there's kangaroos everywhere, birds everywhere. Um, it's a, it's a real chill spot. So I, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a- it's a pretty sick one. Like I remember when we were um, first setting it up, like this is way back, you know, like Chris and I essentially, like where we started the business, um, just us, like even, you know, some of the, um, I was still working at the day job at the time. And with this one, we were, um, it was like midwinter. I don't, I, I feel like every year we say it's the coldest winter ever, but this one actually felt <laughs> like it. It was like, maybe, <laughs> yeah, like three or four years ago. And we were digging gray water trenches ourselves. Uh, drastically, like anyone that knows me knows that I, I I hate winter and I'm almost a denier. So I don't, I have like one jacket, <laughs> one jumper, like so drastically underdressed. It, there's ice on the bloody ground and we've got mm. like hand shovels to dig this thing, like ridiculous freezing cold. But then you'd stand there, you'd have a break and you'd have nothing except for like the birds, the wind through the trees, and just this epic view of the mountain range. And like instantly you'd just be like, yeah, yeah, this is, we're doing the right thing. And it just sort of melted away all of that stress and stuff. So yeah, you've got, um, you've got a special treat waiting for you up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't doubt it. I, um, I've done things like uh, Kokoda Trek and, and Everest Base Camp before, and, and I haven't, I feel like I haven't had a feeling of, of being truly <clears throat> switched off since then a couple of years ago was probably the last time i did Mm -hmm. anything like that so yeah i'm uh i'm pretty pretty pumped for it to uh to say the least so so you guys talked about um you guys talked about well obviously we've mentioned patagonia um i think for a lot of young entrepreneurs um you know yvonne chenard and and patagonia and what they've been able to create is a huge um a huge motivator i guess Uh, very inspirational but um I really love the brand. I really love the business model, what you guys have created. Like what other inspirations around, I guess, entrepreneurship, um, other, other, other companies out there, stories, ideas, like what other things gave you inspiration to go out and do this? Yeah, well, um, great question. Um, lots of stuff inspires us. I think from a, um, from a brand and business perspective, we, we really looked to companies that had created a, uh, an ardent community and almost a cult following um, mm-hmm. businesses like soul cycle over, over in the U S for example, um, you know, we, mm-hmm. we, we took a lot for how they interacted with their customers and ha- how they treated their customers and um, are trying to, to, to build a similar community um, within unyoked. Um, Cam, you got anything, any other ones you want to add there? Um, I mean, yeah, we're like, you know, just read a lot, like sounds like you do to Bill. So like all the classic books, like the Walter Isaacs and Steve Jobs is a favorite that I, that I oh, read. Yeah. Each, you know, read. Yeah. There's obviously pros and cons to, to old Steve, but um, he, <laughs> like just his, his passion and, and sort of principles. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Always, you always leave that reading that book with like so much um, drive. Um, another another great one if we're going down books is as shoe dog have you read shoe dog by phil knight yeah Mark yeah Knight-Hunter. yeah shoe dog sick yeah crazy that, story yeah and that like that kind of stuff you know like more the guys that sort of hustled and you know the you you hear about all the like usually you see that tip of the iceberg but it's the it's the people who you see all of it and like oh yeah okay they've they've gone through some shit and they're uh yeah. sticking to their stuff like they're yeah. yeah, the kind of examples that we look to and you know we're we've been i guess interested in the startup scene for ages so we're, we read mm-hmm. all you know like sequoia's blogs the um mm-hmm. horowitz guys and all of that kind of mm-hmm. stuff and not not specifically other companies that we look to but just like people and all of the examples around and stuff yeah S- yeah speaking no, of which though doc do you know do you know that they i think they kind of built a cabin with matthew mcconaughey did you know that <laughs> oh yeah yeah i did say that <laughs> i did say that 
I expected that you would be raving about it here, but you're here quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is a serious MMA fight, uh, MMA fan. He, the first conversation we had, he mentioned MMA to me. I was like, this guy, this guy. So yeah, Matthew yeah, McConaughey is not a um, MMA fighter though, Walla. Whoa, have I missed that? Mixed that up. Who's the guy? Who's the guy? There was this guy. Um, There's a reason I why I haven't, uh, I haven't mentioned <laughs> Wait, But there was this, this guy. Is, this couldn't be for... I'm, I'm thinking how you've uh, how you've intertwined this one. I'm really interested Shit. to hear your, this your, is, work, this your is, workings. Is, out, yeah? This is shocking, I remember. I remember... Who is this guy? This guy that you mentioned to me, this really big MMA guy that is Conor like... Conor McGregor. Your, Shit, I mixed that up. I mixed that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. I don't know how I mixed the two. I don't know how I mixed the two yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, anyway, quite I'm the, different I'm in the vibes, names, the so, old yeah. uh, Matthew McConaughey uh, and Conor McGregor. Quite, quite different in vibes and energy. I'd love to see them go out that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, would, that would be great. <laughs> all this while, all this while, I thought it was Conor McGregor. All this while. <laughs> <I> was... <laughs> what a classic. Yeah, what Doc classic. saved me. So yeah, yeah saved me from that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, um, I love, with, um, with what you're talking about with uh, Chris, with the, with the community side of things, um, yeah, I really like that. Uh, there's some um, some places in Australia that um, I really love what they do around the community stuff, and it's um, well, particularly Startmate and, and Blackbird. So really, in the Angel and uh, VC and you know startup ecosystem, hmm. um, and you know if you're talking to investors and and you're talking you know SaaS startups and all the all the startups you hear about, everyone talks about product led growth, and I mean typically people think about that for you know software and so forth. But you could also look at that for unyoked. But I also, you don't hear the term, but I think there should be a term and it should be more common, which is community-led growth. You know, And I think that's what you guys are talking about. And I see, um, I 100% see that you could lean on that. You know, That people really see unyoked and say, it, I always talk about this with Athena as well. I think about you know, sales and marketing is making sure people know who you are, um, you know, like what you do and trust you. No like and trust. Obviously, they're the, the, the three pillars. Yep. Think about top of funnel, middle of, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, whatever you want to talk about there. But, but I think that you can go as far in really impact-driven startups to, to try and go for, you know, wanting people to know like, and, know, like and trust and love you. Love you for what you stand for. Your brand, your, your culture that you, you portray, your impact that you're having on the, on the whatever it is, you guys, the environment and human beings and consciousness and so on and so forth, really. Um, so I really like that. And I think that it can be a major strength when done right. You know, it's, a, it's an unfair advantage that, you know, some others, they can try, they can spend as much money as, as possible in digital, digital ad spend, you know, rebrands, celebrity endorsements and so on and so forth. But if you don't, if it's not authentic and you don't have that community behind you, you know, you don't have the same unfair advantage. So yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a that's a, 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 a great point. Um, those are good good examples as well. Startman and Blackbird, you know, I, I'm on their um, newsletters and things, and that they, they have a, a heap of content um, and, and ways you can engage with them. Even though you know they're they're a VC, and most people won't ever be um, using their product, um, they they have built an ecosystem, and it's similar to what to what we're trying to do with Unyoked. You know, we, we realize that. Mm-hmm. People can't can't be out of the cabin, you know. Probably more than three or four times a year. Um, but mm-hmm. but you know, we want to champion in getting out to the outdoors in, in in all sorts of ways. Not just when you've got to come through unyoked and 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 our messaging and and um, content and events and things will will support that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a um not a popular term because it generally has negative connotations, but. We, we approach things like basically like, you know, almost like a bit of a cult, like, because yeah, the, yeah. the actual definition yeah. of a cult is just a group yeah. of people with strong beliefs that others think is yeah. strange. 
And that's mm. 100 People that are in cults love cults. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no problems there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that's what it's like when we started it. And now it's becoming mainstream, but it is yeah. people who, you know, identify with this way of living and wanted to be like that. And, and some people mm. don't get it. And they're like, why would you want to go out to the wilderness on a Tuesday by mm. yourself? Yeah. And they're like, oh, you just mm. don't get it, you know? But um, yeah. it's all, I think the key is authenticity. Yeah. It's one of those guys you mentioned on it as well it's like you know we we never make a decision based on just you know growth or anything like that if if you know we mm-hmm. turned down some pretty big opportunities because it just didn't feel right it didn't feel like us mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't mm-hmm. on and i think that's that's the key because people you've got to identify with something that's sort of meaningful and it's not just you know sales or some some copy on a page. 100%. yeah 100 percent um yeah sweet uh i want to ask you um while I've got a few questions that we normally wrap up with at the end, but before we get to that, I wanted to ask, um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask about the future of Unyoked from a couple of um, kind of, I guess, areas. And one being um, from a business perspective, like where do you see yourselves in, in three to five years or 10 years, whatever, what, what is the plan? And so there's that, but then there's also like culturally, societally, um, you know, what do you want to see in the world really and your impact in it as well um would love to hear thoughts <laughs> big questions <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i mean i mean for, from the unyoke side like i think we you know we want to be a, a globally recognized brand that that people mm. see as a sort of beacon of this way of life that's a flexible way of living um closer to nature and we want to help people access those, those benefits um, when they need it most. And, um, you know, that it doesn't mean, like you said, like definitely not Amazon sort of thing, like staying tight, staying true, but in a lot of places and in and doing it in a lot of different ways that aren't cabins. Um, and, you know, if, I could, if we could travel around and, and then suddenly, you know, no matter where you are, there's a cabin there for you or, or some sort of way to access nature quickly and easily. Um, mm-hmm. Or even, you know, if we change enough people's mindsets so that this cultural shift that's changing, we can sort of accelerate that. Even if they don't come mm-hmm. to one, they just start going to the national park once a week. Like that, that's a win for mm-hmm. us. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. And I think that um, that plays into that societal sort of side, you know, like we we do want to drive these views that we hold that, that we think are positive views in terms of, you know, more appreciation of the environment, um, greater respect for our own mental health and time um, and and sort of, I guess, hopefully have a positive impact. And it sounds cliche. I've been watching um, Silicon Valley recently and, you know, how they, they all say like make the world, but, um, but uh, it's kind of, you know, if we, if we can do our, our part to, um, you know, to fight climate change, that, that's kind of one of the big aims of, of what we're doing is sort of whether it's through grassroots or us, um, us being successful and, you know, like I said, reforesting some land and things like that. Um, yeah. that that's a big part of us, I think as well yeah. yeah yeah for sure spoken like a true cult leader cam <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i'll uh, nah, I'll, nah. I'll let my hair, hair down and it might uh, <laughs> <laughs> might help that image yeah 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 what about you chris what about what about you on these ones <clears throat> yeah i mean I, I i definitely echo what what cam said there um in in terms of our our goal for the business it's it's not world domination by any means it's it's uh getting more people out to nature um, and m- making that process easy for people. And, you know, if mm-hmm. it, to do that, you know, it, there are people in every metropolitan area in the world that, that, that are spending too much time there and that aren't, aren't aware or have forgotten, uh, you know, what, what the benefits of just taking two days tapping out and sitting among the trees can do. So ha- however we can, can increase our, our reach to help people do that, we're, we're going to explore it and, as, as Cam said, it's you know it's through through all sorts of means. You know, like we've we've got a record label where we're, where we're helping produce music that's inspired by nature, and people will listen to it, and and, and that can bring them closer to nature. Like, there's all sorts of other avenues that that, that we're exploring, and you know our, our ideas list is as long as well as question list, and we um, yeah, <laughs> we've got got plenty of stuff to to accomplish still. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, on, on that sort of cultural societal side of things, I think, yes, yeah, some, some of those um, impacts we spoke about earlier, just just getting people away from their computers and 
breaking breaking that you know rut and routine that people are in where they're just going from from post to post and you know to tv show to tv show and um yeah. it's super important and you know the, the world the world's in a in a bit of a dangerous place i think we'd, we'd all agree and you know with, with mm-hmm. recent political events around the world and the the distance between the last sort of world wars and and, and times like that is getting greater and, and people's memories are getting shorter and i, I think mm-hmm. The, the state of the world with technology and and the lack of um, environment um, is is only making it worse. So if if we can slow things down or, or start to reverse it and, and make an impact there, then you know we, we, we'd love that. Yeah, yeah, epic, epic. Now, nah, awesome stuff. Well, I... okay, okay. These questions <laughs> are these questions are easy. Not like talks questions. <laughs> talks, <laughs> talks questions. <laughs> and yeah, nothing, nothing about Conor McGregor. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> Don't be hard uh, on yourself, bro. Everyone, everyone, uh, everyone gets those two mixed up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, hmm, what are you guys have already mentioned some of them, I guess. But what are your favorite books of all time <clears throat> book or books anyone of all time? um but uh, I'll, I'll throw one in there um i've read recently loved it's another walter isaacson it's the um delinata da vinci um walter isaacson book and it's a it, it's a fascinating read um and it really focuses on the the juncture where he sat between um sort of science and create creativity um mm. and it's it's somewhere where where Cam and I like to to try and sit ourselves as well, um, you seems- know. And it, yeah, it's it, it really sort of sparked a different sort of thinking in me. So yeah, it's it, it's a great read. Love that. Yeah, I think I'll um I'll reiterate Shoe Dog. Like I think any any sort of young yeah. entrepreneur should read Shoe Dog because it makes you feel comfortable with uh, shit going wrong all the time, um, and <laughs> makes you realize that everyone has that. Um, the other one I'll throw in there um, is is actually it's called Constellations of the Forest. Um, I actually read it ages ago before we started the business, but I, I reread it every year. It's written by this French travel writer, and it's basically him going to a cabin on the edge of Lake Baikal in Siberia um, by himself for six months, and it's just him like a travel diary, some philosophy, some like poetry, and it's just. It really teaches you, yeah, that what you were talking about, Wale. Like, it's like, I should be bored for a little while. I should do something yeah. different. It's just a really good grounding book. Um, but also, yeah, makes you want to travel and just get away from your desk. Yeah. One other one, yeah. which which we actually buy all our new team members, is Daily Stoic. I, I don't know if, if you guys have read it, but it's um, it's just a daily piece of, of stoicism that's very di- digestible and um explains with with the uh with the ancient quote and then a, a modern interpretation of that um cool. and it's you know it's just quite profound some of these that these statements yeah. that, that that you know people wrote two thousand years ago but still directly apply to to our way of life now yeah yeah love that thank you guys for sharing that um my next question drum roll haha <laughs> not that dramatic um <laughs> <laughs> uh what to what to can you guys can each of you not live without you know just for reference uh we had someone on like a couple of podcasts ago that said her favorite tool was breakfast so you can go crazy yeah. <laughs> so, go so crazy. lunch could be yeah. a tool dinner could yeah. be a tool yes exactly <laughs> a burger could be yeah. a tool <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. mm, that's a that's a tricky one um I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say like, I'm thinking the breakfast thing, like I'm, I'm thinking about what makes me, what makes me happy. And, and it is the, it is the simple things. And I think I've got yeah. this, this, uh, this, it's actually just a bowl, but it's a big bowl. It's like one of those, I don't know where it's from, but it's like, you know, it, it's like three meals in one, but that thing, like that, basically you fill that up, <laughs> walk down, walk down in the sun and sit down and have like a meal essentially. But that's, um, you know, whether it's muesli and fruit or a big bowl of something like that's, um, makes me happy. So I think, yeah, I'd, I'd want to bring that wherever. Love that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, my, I mean, my mind immediately went to my hands, but I don't know if that's a if that's a cop out. Um, it works. It works for me. I definitely couldn't do it without them. But, but, um, 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think I, I've always got a pencil with me um, to taking notes down. Uh, that's that. That's mm. that's really important. Um, I, I need to do a little meditation every day. That's an important tool to to keep me grounded. So, yeah, one of those three would work. I think. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay, and for my final question, uh, any advice to entrepreneurs out there? Really, anything that comes to mind? Yeah, I think the most important thing we've learned from is is speaking to other people that are that are doing it. So, like you know, when you start, that so many people think like, oh, I've got to keep everything secret because someone's going to copy it. That's the total opposite way that you should be thinking. Like we've learned so much of our best advice from other people that have been doing it and from just asking mm. questions and talking so that that's the most advice no matter what stage you are at your idea talk to everyone about it um mm. validate it learn and and find other people that are at various stages of the journey as you are and and try and just talk to them and it just makes such a difference to be talking with people that are i guess your peers rather than you know um really experienced people or like advisors or shareholders like it just yeah it really helps yeah yeah thank you yeah i think if i had to add something else there and um another fairly fairly straightforward one but one that cam and i have have um sort of pondered on over our journey is uh the sort of beauty of momentum which is you know once once you get started just get started and then just keep doing things and and, and you know you you will pick up momentum and, and, and you know people will join you along the way and and, and you know things will happen and so really it's just important to to just get started and to just keep going at it you know and keep going through, through the hard times and you know read, read books like shoe dog to 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 bring you in behind the curtain that that happens to everybody these hard times but uh yeah just just keep pushing because m- momentum picks up and you know it, it, it sort of takes you with it yeah and mm. I, I don't know i don't know how many you want but another like <laughs> probably another, the other key one um just a nice nat- magic number three is um this one's the most cliched one but it's also it's a cliche for a reason but it is if you're going to do something do something that's you and that you actually care about and that you know represents the way that you think or the what you care about because it's a shitload of work and there's so many ups and downs and it yeah. does massive difference if what you're building is for you rather like you know we've had a lot of ideas over the years that we've chased to a certain degrees and and like some of them you know we were going to do a coffee subscription app before um back before all of those things came around and we were pretty close yeah. to it. we were like do we care about this like do we are we going to mm. be actually staying up at night working on a coffee subscription app probably not mm. so, whereas unyoked we kind of stumbled into because it is us mm. and it has made a massive difference um yeah. so as cliched as it is I, that one's there <laughs> love it love it i kind of have like a bonus question even though i said that was going to be my last question <laughs> i <laughs> cost me line cost me line but, yeah. <laughs> uh this this i think doc asked this but i i'm not sure i missed the response where where who came up with the unyoked name like where did, did it come from the phrase unyoked you know who where did it come from yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I, well, Cam and I were searching for something which explained what, what we wanted people to do. We, we wanted the name to to have the meaning behind it. Um, and a lot of the um, sort of upfront words which explain getting people out of the city and back to nature or helping people, you know, disconnect or seeing them free or, you know, that those are uh, standard words which which domains are taken or, or cost a lot of money. Um, and so we, we also wanted something a bit obscure because uh, it's a mm. good SEO principle to, yeah, to, own, yeah. to own it. Um, so we just looked up synonyms uh, really and, and, and we're searching through and we found this word uh, unyoke, which uh, is a, you know, a, a word which means to take a yoke off, off a farm animal, which is like something which connects it to a cart. Um, and then there was an archaic meaning to the word, which meant to be set free. Um, yeah. And, you know, we were like, yep, sweet, that, that, that'll, yeah. that'll work. <laughs> yeah, definitely works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does a great job, I reckon. Yeah, we, um, we actually had um, yeah. a, a, like early, early shareholders and people told us that that name's never going to work. It's too random. Like it's change it, change it to something obvious. But uh, we, you know, that, that, back to that authenticity like it actually means yeah what it's, it's what perfect to me yeah. yeah 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 nah, me too I, me too 
<coughs> Epic. <coughs> cool. Hey, gents. Um, look, we're getting towards the end of the show now. Um, <coughs> where can people find more about the two of you, Unyoked? Uh, anything else that you want to um, mention? You know, now's your time. Um, yeah, where, where can people find you? Um, you can can jump to our, our website, which is unyoked.co, U-N-Y-O-K-E-D.co. Um, that's also our, our Instagram handle. So follow us there for some some sort of cabin porn-esque shots um, <laughs> or when you can't get out to nature. Um, Cam and I are, are always available for a chat. You know, our emails are chris at unyoked.co or cam at unyoked.co. If your listeners want to want to reach out, um, you know, within reason, we, we are busy. But if, if we can say hey and answer back, we will. So, so feel free to hit us up. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Well, um, that's it from me, Wallo. What about you? That's it from you. Are we good? <laughs> that's, that's it from me. That's it from me. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, awesome stuff, gents. Um, yeah, really proud to be able to have you guys on the show. Um, like I said, I noticed Unyoke, uh, Unyoked. Uh, yeah, a couple of years ago now and, and was really inspired by what you're creating. Um, and yeah, wish you all the best in the future. Um, Team Athena will be cheering you on. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing where it all where it all ends up. Yes, guys. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for chatting. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have to touch base once you've uh, got out to Wall, crossing, crossing our fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%, 100%. I'll Thank give you guys the full update. Alrighty, <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, gents, and uh, that's a wrap.